Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States has one of the most advanced navies in the world. However, every effort has been made to equip these vessels with early detection equipment. Enemies can still post threats from land, sea, and air. Fortunately, the Navy has many tools at its disposal to defend its vessels, even when they're in the middle of the ocean. Close proximity threats are those that are near enough to the ship to pose an immediate danger. They range from fast attack boats and unmanned vehicles to aerial threats like warplanes and drones. For naval vessels, aerial attacks pose the greatest threat. This has proven true since the invention of the aircraft, but is even more critical thanks to powerful new anti-ship missiles and other aerial weapons. For this reason, many ships carry advanced aerial defense systems, including radar, missiles, and automated guns. One of the most critical of these is the Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS. This radar-guided Gatling gun system is capable of firing 20 mm rounds at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. This creates a dense wall of fire capable of disabling and destroying a wide range of threats. Codenamed Phalanx, the CIWS is fully automated, allowing it to provide rapid target detection and engagement. With its one-mile range, it is often capable of detecting and destroying a target before a human operator would have been able to identify the threat. Most importantly, it can be used against multiple targets, including aircraft, missiles, and drones. Most U.S. Navy warships are equipped with some form of Vertical Launch System, or VLS. These are weapon systems built into the deck of the vessel and are capable of firing surface-to-air missiles to intercept aircraft, drones, or even other missiles fired by the enemy. Most VLS designs use reloadable canisters or cells, which eliminates the need for traditional deck-mounted launchers. When tied to a combat system like Aegis, these missiles can be launched against multiple targets at once with minimal human involvement. Another key aspect of shipboard defense is RAMS, which is short for rolling airframe missiles. These are more lightweight and far faster than their vertical launch counterparts. With models like the RIM-162 ESSM and RIM-166 being able to intercept their targets in a matter of seconds. Between their speed, small size, and low altitude, 
they are nearly impossible for enemies to detect before it's too late. For smaller and more immediate surface threats, the ship has an arsenal of smaller weapons at its disposal to eliminate these threats. For such circumstances, sailors are trained in the use of 50 caliber machine guns. These powerful rapid fire weapons can provide instant suppressive fire against small boats, low flying drones, and other nearby threats. They are especially useful against fast-moving targets, as they can fire at rates as high as 120 rounds per minute. This is often enough to push threats away from the ship, if not destroy them outright. Some close-up threats call for more precise attacks, which is why Navy soldiers are also trained in the use of light arms and assault rifles. In the event that the ship is boarded or larger weapons cannot be used effectively, these crewmen can still defend their ship effectively. While at sea, crews will often turn portions of the ship's desk into firing ranges so that they can practice various attack and defense scenarios. Despite their size, small boats can pose a major threat to even the most sophisticated battleships. Marines and other Navy personnel are trained to take such threats seriously. They will use everything from machine guns to helicopters to explosives to keep fast attack boats from breaching the ship's perimeter. The MK-38, Mod 3, represents the next generation of the Navy's shipboard gun systems. The MK-38 can be fitted with a 25mm chain gun capable of firing more than 200 rounds per minute. Most importantly, this state-of-the-art weapon system has been modified for remote operation, allowing for precision targeting in rough seas or against moving threats. The weapon has a maximum range of more than 16,000 yards, but is most effective against targets within 3,000 yards. In modern warfare, Missiles and rockets have become the weapon of choice for most countries engaging hostile adversaries. Missiles come in various types, each designed for specific tasks. These include intercontinental ballistic missiles, air-to-surface missiles, surface-to-surface -surface missiles, surface-to-air missiles, anti-submarine warfare missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, and submarine-launched missiles. One of the most well-known types is the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. These are some of the most powerful weapons in the world. Item 135, launcher closure. They can travel over 3,500 miles, allowing them to reach from one continent to another. The concept of ICBMs originated during World War II with the development of the German V-2 rocket. 
As technology progressed, especially during the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union developed these missiles primarily to carry nuclear warheads over vast distances. The idea was to deter each other from a nuclear attack with the threat of a retaliatory strike. ICBMs continue to play a vital role in the defense strategies of several countries today, serving as a cornerstone of national security. Since the early 1960s, the U.S. has been operating underground missile silos to store and launch ICBMs. A missile silo is basically a vertical underground chamber covered by what looks like a giant concrete slab on the surface. So, what's it really like inside one of these missile silos? Let's take a closer look together. The United States has around 450 operational ICBMs ready to fire from these underground facilities. Before any missile is launched, the launch crew performs a pre-launch check to make sure the missile and all its systems are good to go. Workers enter the silo via an elevator and carefully inspect the missile's body. There's also a passage leading to the launcher equipment room, where the launch crew checks the guidance system, propulsion, and safety mechanisms. Once everything is confirmed to be in working order, the launch crew gets the final go-ahead to launch. The launch process starts with a countdown. And for safety, all personnel must leave the area near the silo. The ICBM is then launched from its underground home. and the launch crew continues to monitor and adjust its trajectory until it reaches its target. All right, hand keys. Key While every missile silo has a built-in launch control center, however, in the case of ICBMs like Minuteman 3, the control center is not situated at the launch silo. Instead, Two officers are stationed in an underground control center, connected via 10 different silos, typically known as a flight. To protect the flight from hostile attacks, each facility is situated at least 10 to 20 miles away from each other. The launch control centers or launch crews stay active 24-7 and maintain reliable communication with the President and Secretary of Defense. While ICBMs are typically launched from underground silos, they can also be deployed from the air. For this purpose, the military deploys a specialized aircraft developed by Boeing, the E-6 Mercury. Originally known as Hermes, this aircraft serves as an airborne command post and communications relay. This launch is designed to show that our weapon system is capable, reliable, and accurate. Uh, and it also is a message to our adversaries that we possess this very capable nuclear deterrent and that it does work. Based on the Boeing 707-300, the E-6 Mercury started its service with the United States Navy in July 1989, replacing the EC-130Q. This aircraft has since been upgraded to the E-6B model, 
which was introduced in October 1998. The E6B is particularly significant because it can remotely control Minuteman ICBMs using the Airborne Launch Control System. All right. <laughs> From carriers to small patrol boats, modern naval defense is a layered system built on technology, training, and teamwork. Sensors, missiles, guns, and the close-in weapon system work together to detect, track, and defeat threats before they can harm the ship or its air wing. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.